human. Thank you so much for being here. Your lifelong advocacy has touched millions of lives. You sued for the right to become the first teacher to use a wheelchair in New York City. You fought for the rights of others by leading a historic 10 city sit-in. You helped develop and implement laws to ensure rights, supports, and access for people with disabilities. That includes the Individuals with Disabilities Act, Section 504, and the ADA. On behalf of the National Education Association's three million members, I am thrilled to recognize you with our highest honor, the 2021 NEA Friend of Education Award. Judy? Thank you so very much. Uh, for my blind and low vision friends, let me explain that I'm a white disabled woman. I'm 73 years old. I have brown short hair. I'm wearing a blouse that's different shades of blue and glasses in the foyer of our apartment. It's really an honor to be receiving this award. And I want to thank all of you who are listening for the heroic work that you've been doing this past year. As we all understand, education is the, is the key to the future. And we've had a difficult year with COVID. Thank you for your resilience. Oh, Judy, um, thank you for teaching me today. I am a Black woman. I have a vibrant pink jacket on uh, with a pink and pearl necklace. And in my backdrop, I have a beautiful oil painting from South Africa of a king and queen with the sun rising over that beautiful land. Judy, I understand your advocacy started early because of what you personally experienced fighting to be included in the educational system. Can you share with our members just a little more about your personal journey and why you felt compelled to dedicate your life to becoming this unapologetic and fierce advocate? So let me start off by saying I grew up in Brooklyn and I had strong parents. And I attribute growing up in Brooklyn and strong parents to leading me to where I am today. But very briefly, I was born in 1947. As most of you know, none of the laws protecting the rights of disabled individuals really uh, began to become law until the 1970s. And so when my mother took me to school in the 1950s, to enroll me in our local neighborhood school, I was using a wheelchair and the principal said I couldn't go to school there because I was a fire hazard. And I had a teacher who came to my house for two and a half hours a week uh, for the first, second, third and half of the fourth grade. At that point, it was very clear as I was growing up that there was not an expectation that I or the millions of other disabled people who lived in the United States were expected to grow up and contribute to society. I think uh, my experience and the experience of many of you watching today who come from other minority groups really understand both the pivotal role that education does or does not play in our ability to move forward. And I think as I got older, it was becoming quite apparent that I was very fortunate to have parents who really fought for me they were immigrants from Germany. My father didn't graduate high school, um, but nonetheless, they really uh, respected and valued education and taught me that it was really my responsibility, not only to continue to pursue education for myself, but really uh, my strong belief that we are not gonna be a country that is truly democratic if all children are not able to receive the education they need, whether they're white, black, brown, indigenous, disabled or not. Thank you, Judy. You know, the folks listening to you today could not agree more that education is the center of everything. You also had the opportunity to work for the Department of Education. So you have this unique perspective as a former teacher, having that chance to, to have an impact on education policy. 
Um, what learnings and advice do you have for your fellow educators on how, as practitioners, they can be inclusive and what role policy can actually play to impact inclusion systemically? I think we all know that we learn certain things in school and then it really is our responsibility to continue to learn more about how we can effectively work in the growingly diverse classrooms of today. And I believe that we can in fact be putting more pressure on our universities to in fact be providing more effective training for our teachers and support staff. And I think it would be incredibly important if people were graduating who had dual certificates because when you're working with students who have different learning needs, and that includes students with disabilities. We need to value and respect. We also need knowledge. We need knowledge on how to appropriately accommodate students in classrooms. I believe very much in team teaching where bringing two teachers together can really help affect outcomes. And ultimately, I think we need to recognize that no student is more valuable than the other. And I know that can be challenging with students that we're working with who have needs that we are not necessarily adequately trained to assist those students with, but relegating students to a separate classroom, not receiving appropriate education, looking at overrepresentation of children from certain communities in classrooms where the learning is not going on as it needs to, looking at what's happening with the incarceration of uh, young disabled individuals and the role that we need to play. These are things that collectively we need to be working on and really um, making the Congress understand that public education is vital, that we are committed to public education, ensuring that all children learn and that it is their responsibility to work with us to ensure that we are spending our dollars wisely in school, in the classroom, in supporting services, and not allowing children to fall out of the system. In the disability community, we have a phrase that says, all means all. And when we talk about education, I think it is very important that when we say all, we mean all. Thank you, Judy, for um, centering this conversation in that all. And if we truly mean all, that we have to do the things that you just laid out for us and we cannot we cannot stop now. You know, ramps and ADA protections and IEPs may seem commonplace now, but knowing there is so much more we must do to ensure access and opportunity for people with disabilities, it's important for us to lift up trailblazers like you, Judy Human, who paved the way so that we not only remember and honor your work, but we see it as a call to action, to build on that work. So all, just like you said, it is the all, all of our students can live into their brilliance. Thank you, Judy, for your courageous work and your uh, just continued dedication. Thank you for being here to accept the 2021 NEA Friend of Education Award. Thank you all and I hope to see you in person. Bye-bye.